Rust versus C++, which is better and why? This question comes up a lot lately, especially when considering whether learning Rust is worth it or not. And so I thought it could be a wonderful opportunity to make a new video, discussing the differences between the two, as well as what they share in common. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Both Rust and C++ are system programming languages, which means they can be used to write low-level code like operating system kernels, as well as firmware for microcontrollers. But compared with C, they offer a lot of abstractions that make it possible to go high-level as well, for example, writing games and web applications. Another similarity between C++ and Rust is that neither of them uses a garbage collector to manage memory, which makes the code much more predictable, efficient and, in many cases, faster. Of course, if you ever used C, you will know that managing memory yourself is hard. Besides the cognitive overhead, you are also running the risk of causing segmentation faults and undefined behaviors. For this reason, modern C++ introduced uh, concepts like smart pointers as a way to mitigate those memory-related bugs. But despite the significant improvements, they are limited in the number of guarantees they can offer. Rust takes it a step further and introduces the concept of borrow checker, a component bundled within the compiler itself that makes sure that a reference does not outlive the data they refer to, preventing entire classes of memory and safety bugs. Another big selling point for Rust is its rich type system, which makes it possible to prevent data races at compile time. It does so by introducing two special traits, sync and send, which are used by the compiler to determine whether a multi-threaded operation is safe or not. And while sharing some memory between threads is possible in Rust, the compiler will stop you from building a program that does so unsafely, preventing data races even before the program starts. So, for example, if you want to mutate a variable from multiple threads, the compiler will require you to wrap it with a mutex or something equivalent, because in general, mutating an unsynchronized variable from multiple threads is unsafe, unless a synchronization primitive or atomic operations are used. Up to this point, we discussed the features of the so-called safe Rust, which provides guarantees like memory safety and prevents undefined behavior. But there is also another version of the language known as unsafe Rust, which basically gives you superpowers at the price of losing all those safety guarantees. Are you wondering why this is needed? Well, there are mainly two reasons. If you want to interact with the low-level aspects of the operating system or hardware, those operations are inherently unsafe. So the safe Rust compiler, which is the one that tries to give you guarantees, is not able to do so. Therefore, if you still want to execute them, you will have to explicitly tell the compiler to trust you and give up those safety guarantees, entering the unsafe side of Rust. The other reason is that when analyzing the code, the compiler is very conservative. From a guarantee's point of view, it's much better to block a valid program than to make an incorrect one pass the compilation step. Thus, there are times in which we might want to bypass those checks and in order to do so, we need to enter the unsafe side of Rust as well. In a way, unsafe Rust and C++ are very similar. The main difference is that the Rust programmers usually avoid the unsafe side as much as possible, unless interfacing with the low-level aspects of the operating system or when absolutely certain that an operation is correct. And this greatly reduces the surface for memory problems. An area in which Rust is arguably better than C++ is package management. If you have ever worked with Python or JavaScript, you will feel right at home with Cargo, the official package manager for Rust. Installing a package is just a matter of adding a line into the dependency files, whereas in C++, using an external library can be a huge pain, especially if targeting multiple operating systems. There are some attempts to bring modern package management to C++, such as Conan and VC package, but they are far from being standardized or easy to use as cargo. With that being said, the C++ ecosystem is huge, much bigger than the Rust counterpart, as the former has been around for multiple decades. As a result, there are many more libraries for C++, and thus 
there might be cases in which a suitable library is not available for a specific task when working with Rust. The good news is that Rust has a very good foreign function interface, which means you can interface with C code very easily from Rust, and thus also interface with C++ libraries by exposing a C API from them. Unfortunately, this is not always possible, especially in complex cases. There are some ongoing attempts to make it easier to create bindings between the two. An example is the Odo CXX library, which is being developed by the Google Chrome team to investigate whether parts of the browser could be developed in Rust in the future. Another interesting difference between the two languages is the macro system, which in Rust is much more powerful and safer. First of all, Rust ships with two kinds of macros, declarative and procedural. The former type is similar to the traditional C and C++ macros, with the difference that macros are hygienic, meaning they cannot interfere with variables outside their scope, and therefore don't cause any unwanted side effects. On the other hand, procedural macros are completely different, much more powerful and also complex. They can be basically thought of as compiler plugins that receive the program syntax tree as input, manipulate it, and then return the enriched syntax tree as an output. This makes it possible to create annotations, similarly to Java, that enrich the code at compile time. To conclude, which of the two languages is better? As always, it depends, but these are the most important takeaways. Rust is likely the future of system programming, and the proof is that many of the big players, such as Microsoft, Google, and Apple, are moving in that direction, gradually integrating Rust with their products. Don't get me wrong, C++ is far from being dead, and it's not going away anytime soon due to the incredibly vast amount of legacy code built with it. But an increasing number of companies are choosing Rust over C++ for new products. My theory is that in 10 years time, most C++ jobs will be focused on maintaining legacy software rather than creating new products. But of course, uh, that's only my opinion and I might be wrong. With that being said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. And I hope to see you in the next one.